Hi, I'm Dr. Nicholas Fogelson, and I want to explain a little bit about why our practice is out of network. Um, it's a question that a lot of my patients have. You know, most physicians do take insurance and take whatever contracted amounts the insurance companies will pay. Um, and my practice doesn't do that, which is unusual uh, for a lot of patients and people don't entirely understand sometimes. Um, in the world of advanced endometriosis care, a lot of physicians who really are expert and really specialize in this area actually don't take contracted insurance payments. And the reason is because the complexity of the surgery that we do is not well represented by the coding system that insurance companies pay. And by that, I mean, if I were to do a very, very brief endometriosis surgery that could be done by any general OBGYN with a reasonable amount of training, you get paid a, a fairly small amount of money um, let's say $1,000, which may or may not seem small to you, but it's a fairly low amount of money to do a pre-op visit, do surgery, and do you know, post-op care as well. I do surgeries that are substantially more complicated than that. In fact, some of the surgeries I do are four or five, six hours long. They require very high level of training. I did training in cancer surgery. I've also studied with some of the best surgeons in the world. I travel all over the world to study with you know, anyone I can learn from to try to make what I can offer patients better. Um, and I want to offer really the best sort of care that I possibly can offer anywhere in the world I want to offer in my practice. The reality is, is that the insurance companies can't reward that. They really don't know how to value that in any way that's different than any other doctor. And you really won't find any other system in the world that works this way. If you find someone who's the best carpenter in the world, they're going to charge more for the table they make than someone that's just a beginner. Um, but the medical system as it is now doesn't really work that way. And in other fields, um, highly subspecialized surgeons are generally compensated fairly well, such as a heart surgeon who spent eight years in training in heart surgery is generally compensated pretty well. They don't have any problem taking insurance payments. But in the area of gynecologic surgery and endometriosis care, um, it's not. And I ultimately cannot do what I do for the benefit of my patients and maintain a solvent practice uh, if I remain in network. And in the, in the past, I was in network, but I had other ancillary things that allowed myself to support myself, such as I used to uh, be a part, partner in an outpatient surgery center, and that augmented our revenue. But what I found over time is that many of the patients that I have actually aren't appropriate to use an outpatient surgery center for because some of them are very complicated cases that require bowel sections and all kinds of complex stuff that has to be done in the hospital. Um, and I realized over time that even that was a conflict of interest because I was in a situation where if I were to use the outpatient surgery center I was a partner in, I could potentially generate more income than if I didn't. And yet there would be situations where I felt like patients would be better off being in the hospital. And you don't want those kind of conflicts in your practice. You want to just do what is best for the patient. Um, and so I made the choice partially. That's why they made a choice to go out of network. Now, there are other physicians that are employed by hospitals as well. And what happens is hospitals will subsidize a physician's pay based on the cases that they bring into their hospital's operating room. And they don't do it in a contractually obligated way because that would be illegal, but ultimately they subsidize their salary in some way because they are bringing business into the hospital. And I could do that potentially as well and potentially remain in network. There are a few endometriosis doctors that are in that situation, particularly if they work for uh, hospital systems, uh, major academic hospital systems. But I found over time that I just like the care that I can deliver in a personal private practice environment better than the care I can deliver in a hospital system. I used to be on faculty at Emory University. I was the chief of service at a major urban medical center at Grady Memorial Hospital and also ran an endometriosis program at Emory, at the Emory Clinic at Emory University Hospital. And ultimately I found out that although I could do high grade endometriosis surgery and be paid sort of okay, although it was still pretty low, um, pressure was put on me to see more patients than I thought that I could see and still provide the care I want to provide. Um, for example, today I tend to see anywhere from six to 10 patients a day and 10 patients would be pretty busy. Um, four or five new patients would be very busy. Um, when I was a physician at Emory University, 
I sometimes saw 12 new patients in a day. I was giving them maybe a half hour of my time. I was doing all my notes at home instead of spending time with my family. Um, and I was ultimately still not providing the level of care that I wanted to provide. And so every system, every solution to the poor reimbursement for advanced gynecologic surgery is imperfect. So you can work for a hospital and be pressured to see too many patients to really provide the best care, in my opinion. You can be in network and get paid extraordinarily poorly, or you can go out of network, which has some access problems for some patients. And I fully admit that by being out of network, uh, we are uh, preventing access to people who have very low resources. Um, that's troublesome to me, but I don't, at the same time, I don't have a solution to that other than the solution I present right now, which you can read about above as well, is that if a patient has a financial barrier to seeing me, I want you to call me and see what I can do. Um, I don't know that I can operate for free, but I am willing to discount my services to people that can demonstrate a true financial need um, with at least some of my time. If I become so busy that, that uh, I can't do that all the time, I may limit it. But in the end, if there's something that I feel like I'm the only person in the community that would really be the best person to do, do something, um, I'm going to try to help. So please call me if you think that I can try to help. So I hope that's a little bit of an explanation. Um, being out of network is imperfect, but um, it is reasonable, uh, I think, given the way things work. And um, at the same time, I try to set fees in a way that is reasonable. Um, at the same time, I provide resources to patients um, who are dealing with out of network billing. I actually employ a law firm uh, that will handle all of my bills and they will represent my patients against their insurance company to get my bills paid. Um, dealing with out of network bill bills is very complex and involves uh, multiple appeals and it calls complex issues that are well outside the expertise of any patient. And I think to ask a patient to navigate the out of network billing process and expect to get as much reimbursement as is possible from their insurance company is foolish. It is not likely to occur. And so I'm not putting that on the shoulders of my patients. I have retained a law firm that literally will do that for my patients. Um, and that will allow hopefully me to get paid adequately and not have to charge patients an extraordinary amount of money. Um, I will end it here. Um, I hope that is somewhat of an explanation. Um, you will see other videos on this site of me explaining things. And I hope, and I hope that's something that people appreciate. Uh, if I can be of help, please give me a call, 503-715-1377. Thanks.